what are gravitational waves? They are essentially generated when things, when massive things accelerate in a very particular way. The way I like to think about this, I like to do the analogy with, for example, uh, electromagnetism. Imagine you have some particle with some charge. You grab it and you move it like that. What happens? Right, it emits a photon, it emits light. And light is the, 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 the carrier of the, of the force, of the electromagnetic force. Now, similar things happen when you shake a big piece of mass. Now, it has to be done in a certain way. You cannot just shake it in any way. For example, if you have a, a, a spherically symmetric star, and this star pulls it up and down, increasing its mass, its mass, you know, for whatever reason, uh, you will not see a gravitational wave. The same is true if you have this, this thing rotating very fast. You will not see a gravitational wave. Any movement that you do that is spherically symmetric will not emit a gravitational wave. That's something that doesn't happen, for example, with a, with a charged uh, spherical object. Right? If you have a charged spherical object and you rotate, you don't get what you want. It doesn't happen with, with these things. So you have to, to, to do it in a, very, in a very special way. And once you do it, you are generating a gravitational wave. Now, gravitational waves, you can think of it as ripples in space time. And they are spreading upwards, you know, like ripples in a pond. And that's the way we like to think of the gravitational waves. So far, we have not detected gravitational waves. There are many international efforts going on trying to detect this world. This would be the last, uh, not the last, but one of the very important discoveries. So we have the Vero in Italy, France, the Shio in Germany, Great Britain, Asiva in Australia, Tam in, in Japan. In LIGO we have two Michelson Morgan style interferometers. And these are the two LIGO sites. There's one in Louisiana, the other one in Washington State. What they do is Remember the, the Michelson model experiment in which they were trying to detect variations in the time that light was born, when light was going back and forth compared with what it was in another direction? It's very similar. So you can sort of see it in here. It's long as four kilometers long, fully vacuumed, and <coughs> one arm goes there, the other one goes in there. And these things try to essentially measure difference in distance between the two arms, because if I gravitational wave passes through, it will shorten one distance more than another one, and you will be able to see a time difference between, or a, or a distance measurement between the two. And you will be able to conclude that the time between these two changes. And you can say, ah, that's a gravitational wave. That's the only thing that could change time in space in that in such a way. So this is, they, have, they had some problems originally when they started. They had, uh, you know, this is close to a, to a to a forest and there were machines chopping down trees and that was producing some noise in there so they had to essentially refurbish many components along the lines to get rid of that noise. And also to make sure they are measuring something they expect they have an ad in a very similar way for kilometers here, for kilometers there, which is in Washington state. And now the, I understand they are at this point using the information of both of them to try and draw conclusions about gravitational waves. And another very interesting uh, international effort is the LISA experiment. This is a space based observatory. It's, the idea is essentially So imagine you have imagine you have the okay, this is the this is the sun. And the Earth is going around the sun. Right? It's there. Okay, so 20 degrees down, the Earth is going in this direction. They are trying to put three things in orbit, in the same orbit of the Earth, 20 degrees uh, behind us. And these three things will measure the distance between each other continuously. So if you have a gravitational wave going to this, to this it will change the position of these three things. And based on that measurement, you can tell, ah, there was a gravitational wave passing through. And more than that, you can actually pinpoint the space this gravitational wave came from. So if there's a source of gravitational waves somewhere in the universe, 
will be able to tell it to this experiment. So this is very nice. I think it's scheduled to launch in 2011, but you know how that works, it always <laughs> delayed. And, uh, I don't even know if they have, uh, they have been fully funded so far. Important point, there is no direct evidence of gravitational voids yeah. So if they end up doing this, and it yes. ends up being a, a jet failure, uh, what else could they do that would be useful? Well, that would, very, that would be very interesting. If they cannot measure anything, perhaps they conclude that there's nothing they can measure in the first place. And that would be that would be very, very, uh, not only upsetting, that would contradict some other evidence that we about, I was about to show you in the next slide, which is this. So, perhaps you want to go over that before I answer that question? Sure. So, this was direct evidence. This is indirect evidence. Imagine a binary system, right? You have two systems. Two stars going, the system is rotating like this. And they are, they are actually moving very fast. But this system is not spherical symmetric. Each star, maybe, but the system itself is not, and it's accelerated. So that emits gravitational waves. And you can imagine the two stars of the system are there in a given, this is a snapshot of time, and you can imagine the, the two stars in the other, they are you know, rotating around each other. And this is how the wave looks like if you were to have this system, which we don't. So, in 1975, let me, let me back up one second. So this is the energy we expect to be released from the system. And as you said, what happens when you have a system with, which is losing energy? They get, closer. they get closer. And because they get closer, they rotate faster. <laughs> so here, in 1975, we did one measurement of the velocity of the, the period with which these two start rotating about each other. And it was some number. And they kept on measuring every and each year, later and later. And they referenced all the measurements to the measure done in 1975. For example, in 1980, in here, they measured the revolution to be two seconds faster. This is in 1980, there at that point, about two seconds faster than it was in 1975. In 85, they measured it to be about seven seconds faster. In 1990, about 12 seconds faster than it was in 1975. And these, all the points in here, are the actual observed data points. The line, however, the line you see in there, is what the theoretical prediction is. This is according to the laws of general relativity. We can predict exactly how much energy should be, should be deviating. And that's exactly played how fast the rotation should accelerate. And as you see here, the line perfectly matches the results. So this is. As of now, the best evidence we have of gravitational wave radiation. The energy of this binary system is diminishing as expected from the gravitational wave radiation. What is the purpose of finding gravitational waves? Well, we want to make sure that we have all the things that the theory predicts. Because if one of these, the gravitational waves are predicted by the theory as we have it. If we do not find a very, very compelling evidence of gravitational wave, you would think there's something wrong with the theory. So this is essentially confirming that it would always be nice to have a direct confirmation, a more direct confirmation than this one inside. And going to what we said, what would we do if we found nothing in this experiment, but we would see this? That's going to be contradictory. That's going to have people thinking very, very hard, trying to understand how is this possible and this not. So it's not all loss. It's not all loss. It's never all loss. There's always a theoretician with a great idea. <laughs> of course, at the same time, there are many theoreticians with bad ideas. There's always one that's, that's right and matches the data. And that's the one we assign this to. And that was it.